It's Roger once again, 2019, Mugvalsa University. Today kicks off the new series on molecular atomic reality. And this is the reality of the situation. Everything that's happened in physics is based on Einstein's theory of relativity and speed of light is constant and particle wave duality, da 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 da, da. Well, let me tell you something. All of that is wrong. And I'm going to show you within one minute that it's all wrong. That is the wave of a red laser. That is the laser beam itself. This is concussed atmosphere as it passes through the air. And that is the particle beam. And that is the actual particles themselves as they concuss trying to get through a venturi here and they are accelerated you can see the beam is pulled and accelerated in its non-accelerated state it looks just like this until it approached that venturi so we know that its accelerated state is accelerated. We know it was red laser light when it started. We know it is red laser light now. We know it is accelerated. That means light can accelerate. We can see its particles. That means light is a particle. It is not a wave. And I have other show, uh, pictures from experiments we did that show that it spins. It does have a right hand spin. Yes, we've seen that. I've also seen that this enormous interference of these particles concussing here at the venturi creates enormous enormous reverse electromagnetic fields and it excites all the free electrons that float in the air which is called ether that ether comes from the sun as particles and they are particles when they are here floating in the air they collect on you as static they discharge from you to ground because ground is a positive attractive source it attracts uh, any electrons will come to anything that has an electron which is everything except a nuclear bomb and i'm going to show you that and that will prove Everything that I'm saying and everything that you have learned is not correct. You have to start from the beginning again. Hubble was wrong because he based everything he thought on the speed of light is constant. It's not constant. It is a factor of the pull of the mass that it is approaching. Okay, we later we're going to get into way deep into this about nuclear decay, all the different types of decay, the different daughter decays and all this business but right now I'm just gonna make it real quick this is an atomic bomb they put a heavy mass inside there is no neutrons they're just positives and negatives they crush it with dynamite and force it into itself all the electrons leave and then the nuclear bits leave and again there is no neutrons so they're actually like little bar magnets they're positives and negatives attached together and they're very 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 heavy compared to the first part that comes out the white light which is the only the, the electrons which they say are one compared to a proton which is a 1800 i don't know if that's true or not but I do know that the p secondary particles that come out are really what the alpha particles strangely enough they're the ones that are the first of one uh, the, the heaviest ones the first ones that come out of the electrons they're the light ones that's why you see the flash then you get the heavier particles come and then of course you get the concussion of the vibration of the, the wave in the air now uh, beyond that everything will rise up in there so let's see that and then i'm going to cut it short and if you're interested in this we're going to go all the way into the nuclear model of, based on electron flood which is the reality of the situation neutrons aren't real and if you look into it when you see what i have to show you, you're going to find out it's just it's just absolute nonsense okay everybody asks about anti-gravity i can tell you what anti-gravity is it's when something becomes positive against the positive suction of the earth and it bounces it away magnetically the earth is positive it sucks in every electron it can get you put electricity next to the earth it was right to earth you ground everything to earth electrons flow to earth static will flow from the air which is free floating electrons called ether it exists everywhere they are the particles to come from the sun it collects on you and it will shoot to the earth they are free floating electrons they have a mass they have an energy 
they just float around trying to attach to water molecules. When you become more attractive, they attach to you, they go to ground. These are the particles that do exist. Now, when they become positive, they pop away from the Earth. So, what would become positive? An atomic bomb. And why would it become positive? Everything is crushed in. All the electrons leave. The positive mass exists in the center. And here's what happens. All the electrons now have just left. Now the mass is rising. Those electrons have vaporized the cloud layers. The, get, the ball of positiveness is being thrown away from the Earth and it's sucking its, everything up with it as it goes, trying to reconstitute itself. That's the shock wave of the atmospheric vibration. The ball is trying to reconstitute itself and it will rise until it becomes flooded back again with electrons then it will come to Earth because it has its negative source to Earth. All right, and this is Mudfoss University up here, and uh, I, I am putting up all this stuff about my research. And now, if you don't believe the Earth is, is, is round, that's okay. I don't care. Please just stay away from my research, though. You know, this is attacking me for believing that the Earth is round. It's just it's getting very, very tiresome. So... This is resonance frequency of Tesla, and this is, I'm asking Dr. Lisa Randall, one of the top physicists in the world now. I have questions for her. I'm going to do another video that pointedly asks the questions I'd like responses to. And I'd like response to this video, of course. Uh, you know, and I don't want an animosity against anybody. I just want to be seen. I just want to be heard. I just want to be considered. This is not silly stuff. I, these are all actual experiments and very very credible and logical thought and flow of the of the reality that i believe we're living in and is missed now don't freak out but we're going to get into the decay series of how uranium decays and it ends up coming down to lead when it's uh when it's fully decayed but there is a ton of what they call daughter decay particles and, and it all makes sense. And, it, and, and once you understand that, you'll be understand this. It's very, very simple. They just put all these numbers here and just lay them here and say, well, go, you figure out what they are. Well, they're very simple. There's a number of protons, and then there's the, the, the total mass. The total mass is all of the, what they thought were neutrons plus the protons. So, and then... They, the way they came up with isotopes means they have the same number of protons, 92, no matter what, 92 case closed, that is uranium. But it could have 238 total mass, or it could have 234, it could have 242, or it could have whatever it is. I'm, I'm, not, I'm throwing those numbers out, but it's the total mass does not have to be a certain total mass. The, the proton mass, the positive mass, is the certain mass. The other parts turn up and down, making it isotopes. And those isotopes are often quite unstable. And when they're unstable, they sometimes just click right out and they just drop down. And I show that in the resonance frequency vibration stuff, just using basic salt on a, on a frequency table. There's an experiment that's on YouTube, and I show that.